Um, but there is a word from the Lord. Um, I won't read all the verses, but I will read verses 16 through 18 since we talked about uh, this this morning. And, uh, it was read in your hearing tonight. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. I'm going to do the latter part of guidelines for prayer tonight. Because every sermon you can get something out of. Morning, noon, or night. For when God's word is preached, there's something, if you listen carefully, that perhaps you did not know before. And God gives wisdom to those who ask for it. Think how many foolish mistakes and unwise decisions that you and I have made simply because we did not pray before we made a decision. So we must learn to take everything to God in prayer and to ask God for God's guidance. Your life, if you do this, will change for the better. This morning we, we said that number one, prayer helps us to overcome temptation. We know this is true. Number two, prayer helps you when you sin and ask God for forgiveness. Amen. And let, let him who asks God, who lacks wisdom, we're to do what? We are to ask God who gives liberally and upbraideth not. Third, prayer helps you to make right decisions. If you're making bad decisions, you need to ask God to help you make right decisions. Amen? Tonight, I want to look at the fourth and fifth aspect of the guidelines for prayer. Prayer will help you render effective service to God. That no Christian should ever undertake service in God's kingdom and in God's name without prayer first. A teacher should pray as she begins to prepare her lesson and as she takes her place before the children she teaches. Job decisions, household decisions, health issues, and family situations. Since one's entire life is lived under Christ and to God's glory, everything done in that life should be undergirded by the avenue of prayer. Number five, prayer helps you in times of sorrow and in times of trouble. Have I witnessed tonight? People who know God through prayer react differently when they're undergoing stress and tribulation and sorrow different than the manner of others who go through some of the same things. Whereas many people cry out in despair when sorrow comes, those who can pray and feel and demonstrate a calmness in their life, which comes only as a result of being near to God Almighty. Amen. God's word, the word of God, assures and reassures us of heaven's eagerness to provide mercy and help for Christians in their time of stress and trial. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, 15 through 16, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, 
just as we are. Yet the difference is yet without sin. I'm going to preach this lesson. Then let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and be able to find grace to help us in our time of need. Until we learn to pray, we will be deprived of many blessings, which otherwise we could have had and used to the glory of God and to our own spiritual development. James wrote, you have not, because you ask not. Henry Ford, the great Henry Ford, the uh, one who designed the Ford automobile, once bought a million dollar insurance policy on his life. We're talking a long time ago. And a good friend of his who was in the insurance business asked him why he had not bought the policy from him. And Mr. Ford replied, because you didn't ask me. How many good things of God uh, have we missed out on because we have not asked God for what we stood in need of? I see I'm in here by myself tonight. What is Christian living all about? It is learning to live in a constant communion with God. It is praying to God continually for 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. The Bible says pray without ceasing. That means your whole attitude, your whole makeup, all you are about, you're always in an attitude and an atmosphere of prayer. It is calling upon God in the confidence that one's needs will generously be supplied. I'm going to be where you want me to be in a minute. I'm still taking off this runway here. It's confessing our weakness and our sinfulness and acknowledging our dependence upon God and then submitting to his way. It's continual. It's not haphazard. It's not every now and then. It's not just when you feel like it. We preach this morning that if there's an obstacle between you and the promise of God, uh, that we ought to have some knocking prayer. Amen? Uh, because you asked for it and it didn't happen. You've been seeking it and it didn't happen. So it's knocking time. It reminds me of when I turned about 12. You men probably remember uh, at a certain point in your life uh, that you used to beat on your desk in school. Yeah, y'all not gonna help me tonight, but, but I remember about the age of 12 that when I learned to put my knuckles together, I would beat on my desk in school and I would make a little knocking beat with my knuckles. And it had a little rhythm to it as I learned how uh, to organize uh, uh, my hands. Isn't that right? And, and some of you know what I'm talking about. I, I would be at home and I'd be knocking on the breakfast table, putting a beat together. Uh, maybe it's my ancestry uh, coming out of me, but, 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 but God, uh, I want you to know when I knock in prayer, when I knock on the door of prayer, that it's me coming to you one more time. It's because I have something on my heart. I've been asking about it. I've been seeking it. But now I'm knocking because you told me the door shall be open. Somebody says, I'm looking for a job. Somebody, somebody, somebody says, ah, I'm looking for help in the home. I'm looking, I'm seeking, I'm, I, I, I'm looking for an answer. I'm, I'm trying to, 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 to get what I need. I'm, I, 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 I've asked for it. I'm, I'm, I'm seeking, but now I'm knocking. Oh, there it is. There it is, God. You have come through for me one more time. I said this morning, and we, we studied this morning, that you ought not uh, continue to stop asking and seek it. Because just when you quit, uh-huh, it could have been that the answer was right at your door. But you gave up before you got it. Ask. And it shall what? And it shall what? Seek. And ye shall find. Knock. 
and the door shall be open. If you ever had to seek God for what you wanted, say amen. Prayer is something you have to get in the habit of doing. I'm almost finished, but whatever you're in the habit of doing, you'll find you'll do it automatically. Am I right about it? Can I be real with you right about now that there are those uh, who uh, buckle your seatbelt. There are those who cuss all the time or a lot of the time or most of the time. And they cuss more than they pray. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying it's real talk. And if you're riding down the road like three months from now, when there's an ice patch on the road and you hit some ice and your car starts sliding all over the road, you might say, oh, I didn't say it, but some people do. Uh-huh. It's because you say what you've gotten in the habit of saying. Uh-huh. But if you are a praying individual and you pray all the time and you hit that same patch of ice, you'll say, oh, Jesus, oh, my Lord, help me, Holy Spirit, the blood, the blood. Why? Because you are in a habit of doing and praying all the time. You will do and you'll say what you're in the habit of doing all the time. Some of you are looking at me kind of funny. Ah, but just nod your head or pat your toes if you can't nod your head. See, the person who curse didn't mean to curse. It's just that they curse all the time. And even though they didn't mean to curse when they were in trouble, when in a moment of stress, in a moment of struggle, whatever you're in trouble, whatever you do all the time is what is going to come out of you. You can't help yourself. That's why you, oh, 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 did I say that? Yes, you did. Is that real enough for you? When you're in the midst of an emergency, when you're in trouble, whatever you do all the time, that's what's going to come out. Whatever you do for God in a regular, consistent love for him, God, watch this, will always outdo whatever you have done for God. Is that all right? Prayer is what I like to call go get Jesus. Go get Jesus. When we go to him in prayer, we've done all we can do, but that then comes a point that when we've done all we can do in the flesh and cannot do anymore you must call on someone that is bigger than you are who can hold more than you can can see more and further than you can see am I right about it sometimes God doesn't do what you ask him to do but you got to keep on talking to God. Isn't that right? You keep on petitioning God. Talk to him in the morning. Talk to him in the noonday hour. Talk to him in the evening. Talk to God late at night. Things may be out of control. And you don't understand why all of the things that are happening to you are happening to you in this moment in time. But you got to keep on talking to God. Prayer will make you go back and try some things that you had given up on. Am I right about it? Some things that you had given up on when you start praying. That prayer will make you go back and start trying again. Uh, doing the things that you had given up on. Relationships that you've given up on. People that you've given up on. When you pray, that prayer will send you back and keep you trying. Weeping may endure for a season, but joy
cometh in the morning. So you got to go back to the spot where your trouble was. Go back to the place where your trouble was. And then knock on it one more time. Knock until a change comes. Knock until things get better. Knock until your mindset changes. Knock until your anger ceases. Knock until your tears are dry. Knock until your hope comes back. Knock until the door is open. And then there is a reward for those who hold on to God even when you don't understand what God is doing. Keep on praying in the name of Jesus. You can't see it, but you got to keep on praying. Don't know why they're kicking us out of this place, but you're going to leave in style. Everything cleaned up better than it was before. Heads looking up to Jesus. Am I right about it? The author and finisher of our faith. I don't know why our delay has been this long, but I must trust even when I cannot see. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. No weapon formed against me shall be able to.